जय हिंद एंड वेलकम बैक एवरी वन थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग सेकेंड डे ऑफ स्किल डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम ऑन फूड एंड बेवरेज सर्विस आई एम इंद्रनील बोस असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर बीकाजी कामा सुभारती कॉलेज ऑफ होटल मैनेजमेंट एंड आई विल बी द मॉडरेटर फॉर टूडे सेशन टूडे वी विल बिगिन विद एन ऑनलाइन गेस्ट लेक्चर ऑन इंट्रोडक्शन टू बियर फॉलोड बाई डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन ऑन बियर बेस्ड कॉपेक्स मूविंग फॉरवर्ड फॉर टूडे टॉपिक ऑन इंट्रोडक्शन टू बियर वी हैव एन एमिनेंट स्पीकर मिस्टर शशिकांत He is an assistant professor in the School of Hospitality Management at IMS Unison University, Delhi. He has graduated from the prestigious IHM Hajipur. Mr. Khan started his career with Taj Hotels and Resorts and joined the Gateway Hotel, Kolkata. During his tenure, he was relocated with iconic Taj Bengal, Alipur, the Gateway Residency Road, Bangalore, Vivanta by Taj MG Road, Taj Mangalore, Courtyard by Marriott, Bhopal. Passion for teaching and learning motivated Mr. Khan to undertake a career in academics. He is a certified trainer for Bar Smart uh, Park uh, Park Nord Ricard the USA, which an exclusive uh, global certification program for bartenders. Mr. Uh, Shashi is also an avid online trainer for the food and beverage services domain and runs YouTube channel for budding hoteliers dedicated to food food and beverage services and wines. He enjoys teaching and research. and very passionately guides his students for a career in the hotel industry his vast experience and knowledge will definitely give us a better understanding about beer we welcome him on behalf of bikaji kama subharti college of hotel management moving forward without further ado we will turn over to our speaker uh, mr shashikant i request you to proceed with the topic mr shashikant over to you thanks a lot uh, mr indrani for such a brief introduction uh, again a very warm good afternoon everyone let's just start now this session let's start with this quote thirst is deadlier than hunger deprived of food you might survive for a few weeks but deprived of liquid refreshment you would be lucky to last more than a few days that's very true now we'll understand about this court later into this segment the evolution of human sapiens has been traced back uh, in very before maybe 1 lakh 50000 before christ uh, these humans started spreading from africa to the other parts of the world they started settling also it's not that quite old just before 12000 bc now where they started settling let's see they started settling to such areas where the rivers were there where they could get uh, the fresh water we call it the fortune crescent this area if you can see this mouse the cursor i'm talking about now this is the area where the evidence of beer has been traced the first civilization they started taking place in mesopotamia which is the current iraq the border of iraq iran syria these were the areas and egypt of course where the first traces of beer brewing has been discovered i always say this that beer has not been invented it was discovered discover means something which was always there we had just discovered it right? i'm going to show you or share you some pictures uh, these pictures are from mesopotamia the pictogram is from mesopotamia which is the current iraq let's see you can see here the people drinking a kind of beverage with the use of straw here now why they were using this straw for drinking a fermented beverages i'll answer that also later let's see another thing yes you see this now these were the containers which were being used for drinking beer now this container is well reserved into the museum of london now let's see now now i hope we have understood now from where the beer has came in existence so there are so many contradictions going on which country should be given the credit 
whether the Sumerians, the Egyptians uh, should be given credit or the people from Mesopotamia should be given credit. Well, in Egyptian history, they have credited uh, the beer making to their god of agriculture, Osiris. They have given the credit to the god of agriculture, Osiris. It is said that someday uh, the god Osiris, he had stipped some barley into the water and he forgot to take it out. Now, why he stipped it? Because it was there into the culture of uh, Mesopotamia, Sumer and Egyptian culture that they were eating barleys a lot. One of the cheapest form of cereal, of course. So they were growing wild barleys into their nearby areas. So the god, Osiris, he stipped barley into the water, but he forgot to take it out. And ultimately, after seven to eight days, after that, he recalled it that he had something stipped into the water. So he went back, he took it out, started to drink you know, that water. He found it pleasant. It is said that he gave this mantra, he gave this formula to the people of Egypt. Still, there are contradictions, but we used to refer that Egypt, Mesopotamia, and Sumerians, they, the people actually, they spreaded the beer to the other world. The written culture, I mean, uh, say the written documents which has been traced is not quite old. It's 3400 BC only. Now we are going to understand, I hope I have satisfied from where the uh, beer, the history of beer has came from. And we'll now proceed to the beer, the definition and the steps for making beer. So let's go now. The definition, let's see how you can define the beer. So beer, it's a fermented alcoholic beverage, first of all, which can be made from barley, wheat, rice, you see. And of course, hops. One flavoring agent should be there. We'll come to know what is hop, why we are using barley, why not we eat rice. Let's go to that. Now, first thing which is going to come into mind is what is hop. So this is how this conical flower looks like. So this is hop. Let's go to the basic raw materials of beer. Let's see. The first basic raw material is barley. So this is the main ingredient. Uh, this is very much rich in starch, how it looks. This is how it looks. Let's see, it might be coming into mind that why we have to use barley, why not any other uh, cereal we should be using. We have rice, wheat, or maize also. Well, we do use. So we use rice, wheat, and maize also for making of beer. We call it as adjuncts. So do remember these terms. Barley is the major ingredient. It's yes, we use rice, wheat, maize and as an adjunct only. Now, why barley? Let's come to this question now. Well, here is the answer for it. First of all, it is cheaply available. It's readily and cheaply available into the market in comparison to other forms of cereals. Next, it is not used as a staple diet now. You see, people use what in India we used to eat lots of rice. Maybe in nor northern part of India we used to use wheat. Still, barley is very rarely used as a staple diet. So that is the second reason. Yes, third reason is it's very, very low into protein content. Now, why not wheat? Well, it is very much high into protein. So what's going to happen if you're going to make beer only with the use of uh, wheat, the beer will be very cloudy. So let's see. One very important factor why we are using barley is it's having a very good stilt, protective stilt, a very good layer, which protects it, protects it from contamination. So that is also the reason we are using barley. Very interesting, it is having a few enzymes, cytase and diastase. Now, these two enzymes are very important. Uh, they actually make this starch uh, soluble into the sugar, I mean, into the water. So they are going to convert that complex starch into the simpler forms of sugar. Let's see what 
does the cytase does. So it converts the insoluble starch into soluble starch. In diastase, it's going to convert that soluble starch into not complex sugar, into simpler forms of sugar. So these are the reasons we are using barley for making of beer. Let's see what are the other ingredients. Yes, we used to use yeast for fermentation. So there are two yeasts you will find being used in making of beer. Saccharomyces cerevisia, which is to be used for the light ale beers, and Saccharomyces Carl's virginesis, which is to be used for bottom fermentation, the lager. Let's see more. So this is how it looks, the yeast. Now let's see the other ingredient as hops is used. Now what is hop? So it is a conical flower, which is obtained from a perennial plant. The botanical name is Humulus leucleus. So do we have this plant being grown in India? Yes, we do have. Instead of Himachal Pradesh, you will find clams of hops and they are growing uh, a lot now. It's going to help, of course, the beer industry. What's there into this? What's there into the hops? We'll be knowing just for now the bitterness of beer which you experience comes from this lots of flavors it used to impart into the beer it contains 60 to 80 percent of moisture let's see what else is there it's used as preservative so it's going to preserve the beer for the longer period it's also acts as antiseptic so it is having antiseptic properties very good aroma into the beer which you find and relish comes from the hops and the last, it's a very good clarifying agent. It will help the beer to be get clear. Now, there are some brands also which we should be knowing. Let's see. Now, these are the brands of hops uh, the hardcore trainers use to teach uh, their students. So if you want to mark this up, you can mark this. Let's see what are the favorite and uh, the good brands here. The Brewers Gold, Northern Brewers, Fudgel, Bavarian hops from Germany, that's Sarge, Secret, Perle, Progress, Tradition, and Cascade. So these are some brands of hops. Now these beer manufacturers, they used to buy these hops from these brands. I hope you have understood it. Let's see now where we used to make the beer. Because the breweries, you see here the Oast House traditionally in England or in Germany or in other part of Europe, you'll find Oast Houses. Now, what's there into host houses? You can see a very good chimney here, which will help to uh, take out the smokes, which will get create during the beer manufacturing. Let's go to the steps now. Before that, one major ingredient is water. So water, which is going to be the main body of the beer, which will be actually the 90% of your beer body comes from the water. So let's recap what are the major ingredients of beer. First, barley, adjuncts. Now, adjuncts, you know now that other cereals, wheat, rice, maize is there, which can be used as adjuncts. Yeast, which will be going to actually do the fermentation. It is going to start the fermentation into. There will be wild yeast, of course, but it will be not enough to ferment that whole barley. So we used to use the yeast and then hops for the flavor and other properties are of course there with the hops. Last is the water. Let's go to the next. Sugar is being added. If your the final product is going to be very bitter, then we used to add. If it is fine, then we do not add. If your fermentation is not speeding up, then also you can add. And if the color is not desired, then we used to add it. So this is something which is the last call of any beer manufacturer. In case they find the beer is not according to their standards, they are going to use the sugar as well. And yes, in case of secondary fermentation, if like the wild yeast have fermented, but uh, the fermentation will make that liquid reach till 4% uh, of alcohol by volume. So to speed up that, we used to add a bit of sugar as well. 
Well, let's see with the beer steps now. The first is stipping, malting, germination, killing, sieving, grinding, extraction of sugar infusion or making of decoction, brew cattle, hop back, hop extraction, fermentation paraflow, lacquering, fining, carbonation, bottling, and pasteurization. We are going to do, we are going to uh, understand each step in detail. So here, let's go with the first step. That's stipping everyone. Let's see now. But the grains, grains means here mainly barley. But the grains will be soaked. You'll see a very huge tank you can see here. Now into this huge tank, what we do is we are going to add barley. If you are, what will be the proportion of adding water into it? Now, proportion will be six tons. Like if you are adding six tons of barley, then there will be 6,800 liters of water into it. Now, what is a stepping? Uh, into this process, you are going to step your barley into the water. It's kind of soaking it inside. Now the temperature, which should be uh, appropriate near to 10 degrees Celsius. Now this stepping process will take place for two to three days. Uh, some breweries or some uh, beer manufacturers, they used to change the water. The grains already being soaked into the water. They will do what? They are going to take out the grains and they will replace, I mean, they will uh, again fill another batch of water and they will again put that grain back. So this is how they use. Now what or why they are doing it, the changing of water, they call it dry resting. So why they are doing it, just to uh, provide extra oxidation or say more air to the grain so that it can germinate well in the future. Let's see now, the next step is the malting now. Now those stables, uh, grains are taken out and then we used to, to what? It will be just spread it onto the floor. We call it malt room. So into these room, onto the floor, it will be spread. Uh, they used to take some gravels, they will be taking some sticks also and uh, the people used to turn the grains up down. Now they used to make sure that air is circulating inside. If they are not going to do properly this malting, the germination will be not proper if they are not going to turn the grains rapidly. Uh, this process will take around 6 to 15 days and the temperature of this malt room should be 6 to 15 degrees Celsius, between 6 to 15 degrees Celsius. Uh, 12 to 21 degrees Celsius, I beg my pardon. After this step, the germination will take place. The grains, you see here, the grains will start germinating. Now what happens inside chemically, the insoluble starch, which is there inside, will start breaking down and will change into maltose and dextrin and rootlets. We call it malt scum. Now, size days, and as I mentioned about those twin giants and dice days, they will be also acting. Now, this first size days, they are going to first convert that insoluble starch into soluble starch, and then dice days in time will be acting, and then they are going to convert those soluble starch to sugar. Uh, at the last, what you are going to get is this lovely germinated green malt. We are going to call it as green malt. Let's see next. After that, that green malt will be sent into this kiln. We call it kiln. Let's see what's there inside this small machine. There will be perforated, tilted floors. You'll see here that one floor. Again, there will be another floor. Now we used to put that germinated 
green bulb inside. And then this machine will start giving heat. The temperature which has to be maintained inside this kiln will be 49 degrees Celsius. Now what happens? Into this step in kilning, that green malt will start drying up. The moisture content will reduce. If moisture content will reduce, of course, the sugar content will increase. Right? Now, if you want pale malt, then we need to increase the temperature by 65 degrees Celsius of the kiln. If you want crystal malt, then you need to increase the temperature by 85 degrees Celsius. If you want chocolate malt, then we need to increase it by 225 degrees Celsius. Now the end product, this pale malt will be used for light ale. The crystal malt will be used for pale ale and the chocolate malt will be used for dark beer. Let's see how those malted barley after killing will look like. Let's see this. See this? So this is the one which will be used for the light ale. This is for the dark ale. That's for the liquor or the dark beer if you want to make. Next is now the sieving. That's now your uh, those malted barley is dried and it will the outer skin is going to uh, start coming out. So it requires sieving. Now it is done to just remove those malt gums, those uh, outer skins and other things. So that will be for the sieve and will thrown to the cattle feed. Let's go to the next now. After that, those grains will be taken and it will be mild. It will be grinded. See this. So now this, after grinding, it will turn into grist. If you can see the second picture, that's grist. So in grinding, we are just putting the grains into uh, the grinder. And we these uh, tooths, these uh, tooths are going to convert those uh, uh, grains into the grist. Why we are doing it? We are breaking it so that once we are going to add water into it, then those sugar will come into the water and the fermentation process will take place. So basically, we are doing it just for the extraction of sugar. Now the grist, we are going to call it grist. The green malt dried, now it is grist. That grist is now taken into the mastern here. This is mastern. Now what we are going to do, we are going to add water inside this mastern. And this mixture, the grist, which is now going to change, it is going to now ferment and uh, later ferment, it will come with a cloudy, sweet liquid, which will be called as wort. If you see here, that grist added with water inside the mastoon will look like this. Now, this step will take place for two hours and the temperature of 63 degrees Celsius. Let's go to the next now. And into that step, the sugar will start dissolving into the water. The decoction. Now in this step, the latitude, this uh, machine which you see here, that's latitude, into which we are going to put our wort. So earlier it was green malt, then it became grist, now it is wort. So that wort is going to be taken into the latitude and it will be again heated up at 70 degrees Celsius temperature and it will be done for four to five hours. So decoction, if somebody asks you what is a decoction, so decoction is the process through which you use to take out the flavors, flavors from anything and the flavor will come out into the liquid. That liquid will be called as decoction. That's what is happening here into the latitude. Now let's see the next is the brew kettle. Here it is. This tank. Now that wort will be pumped into these tanks. Call it brew kettle, which is pressurized. 
and into this tank only we are going to add the hops the hops will be added and there will be ratio of adding hops around 191 to 907 grams of hops can be added to 100 liters of what now into this stage only uh, the brewmaster might be tasting it if they find the sugar level is not balanced they can add sugar into this stage only now the boiling will take place for two hours now this will ensure sterilization as well after the brew kettle the removal of hops now what's happening into this we used to put uh, the water into the hop bag it's a machine only where there will be a perforated chamber now what's going to happen the hops will be lined up onto that perforated chamber and the wort will be poured onto it and then it's going to do what it will take all the flavors from the hops and will uh, uh, come down into the tank now with the help of another machine that's called as hop extractor which will rotate now but that machine is going to do what it will take out all the hops which was there into the wort done now let's see the next step is fermentation now what we have did is from green malt changed to the grist from grist to the wort then hop and sugar was added now the fermentation where we are going to add yeast inside of course boiled yeast will be there and they are going to convert of course the sugar and uh, it will reach till four percent of alcohol by volume or less also now what we are going to do is there will be yeast being added into it and uh, then it will take 7 to 14 days for this whole fermentation now what's going to happen you will find a very thick layer onto the surface of upcoming beer now let's see what happens next now after that we are going to do the maturation step now this maturation or lagering step is done into these stainless steel vats you see here at the temperature of zero degree celsius now the beer can be matured for weeks to month few breweries they used to uh, uh, bottle their beer very fresh and there are many brewers they used to mature it for months at least now why they used to mature the lager beers or the lagering uh, one the matured beer require bit maturation so that the flavors can mellow down Now the finding is yes, the beer, as I mentioned, that it will be a bit cloudy, so it has to be clarified. So what we can use is we can use proteins, we can use egg white, egg shells, we can use ox blood, gall bladder, sturgeon fish icing glass also can be used. Let's see here. You see this is icing glass. Only the egg white can be also used. Bantutine can be also used. But these are some cheap uh, ingredients already available. So any of the breweries they used to add this now what happens in this as the icing glass or the egg white is added into the beer it is then given heat a very moderate heat is given so that uh, this protein will start getting coagulated it will coagulate and all the impurities will come onto the floor next is the carbonation now into this step we are going to add carbon dioxide. See here. And the next will be the bottling and canning. Now, before bottling and canning, the bottles need to be uh, treated with sulfur dioxide. Now, the use of sulfur dioxide makes sure that it is free from any uh, contamination or any microorganisms so it can be done similarly with uh, the cans which are available now after that step the next is the pasteurization now into this you can see here now those bottles will be now passed passed from these uh, water falling with a temperature of 60 to 60 degrees uh, 66 degrees Celsius temperature so it will be uh, done till 20 minutes so those all uh, 
those beer bottles will be passed now for the pasteurization now see uh, many of the breweries or brew masters they used to believe that during pasteurization the flavors the actual flavor of beer used to get uh, uh, you know uh, go away or fade away so i have seen like brew masters suggesting not to pasteurize many the next is now let's see about draft beer we we'll know uh, about different types of beer later but i want to mention uh, draft beer especially let's see what's there a uh, draft beer as i mentioned that uh, pasteurization will kill as i said that brew masters they used to feel or uh, believe that it actually uh, kills the original taste of the beer so sometimes you will find uh, some beer into uh, the bars or into pubs draft beer or draft beer we call it you will find the beer into a separate container the beer has not been carbonated there will be another container full with the co2 gas now here the beer is here co2 gas is here into this container now here is the fresh carbonation being done the carbonation is done and it is it will come out with the help of these tap towers you must have seen on to the bar tops right so that's all about the draft Draft or draft beer, call it cake beer also or uh, fresh beer as well. So these are some containers you will find in uh, maybe pubs and bar. A pen that will be 4.5 uh, gallons container. One gallon will be here 4.5 liters. Firkin, that means nine gallons. So you can imagine how. Uh, many liters of beer might be there inside. Keg, very containing. Ten gallons of beer. Kildekin, eighteen gallons. Barrel will contain thirty-six gallons of beer. Hogshead, that is going to contain fifty-four gallons of beer. Do remember this, I. Yes, this parents or the Beechin students or other students might be having this uh, question always into the exams. What's hogsheads? So that's uh, a container or uh, a draft beer container. The capacity will be 54 gallons. Let's go to the stories now. How to store a beer? It has just came out. The bottling is being done. Now, the lager beer. Now what's lager will understand so let's see first how to store lager beer first so lager beer that is going to be stored into dark place that temperature of four to five degrees celsius bottle should be kept horizontally so horizontally it has to be kept not vertically the way the wine bottles used to be kept ale beer that has to be served uh, uh sorry stored at uh, 10 to 12 degree celsius temperature again the position will be horizontal only so let's go to the next now the lifespan the bottle beer uh the lifespan will be six months uh i i have given this because see it's a carbonated product so there will be a lifespan if it is it's not been cocked well the way champagne and other sparkling wines are being cocked or uh, foiled so there will be lifespan of uh, beer here uh, the bottle beer six months only so after that you will find it not that fizzy can't beer one year the drop beer 48 hours after being trapped tapped so tapped here means the that fresh carbonation which has uh, been done i need to show that so here is the beer the co2 gas is here and here is that uh, tapped one the fresh one so once it has been tapped here so it should be consumed after within 48 hours so that's the lifespan everyone now let's go to the type of beer <clears throat> so these are the types first is ale there are different types of ale let's see stout water indian pale ale ipa that's short form uh, people used to call it as trappiest button scotch ale Let's go to the lager now. Bach. Pilsner. 
ice tea. Manchna Darmantar Dot Mandar will be discussing major varieties of ale and lager only. Or all I can mention, but let's see. First is how you're going to call ale. So the ale it comes in very wide variety uh, and style. So it's a top fermented beer, we call it. We require very high temperature for making ale beer. So here is this. The next is stout. It is a type of fermented beer, having very rich, but that uh, froth, that foam which you see on a beer, it will be very heavy into stout. Let's see how it's going to look. We consider stout as more creamy. Next is Potter. This is a dark variety of ale only. Uh, it's having sweet and very pleasant flavor. Let's see. Next is the trappiest or the Abbey beer, which comes from the Belgian area. Belgium. Now it is uh, made by the Trappist monasteries. They used to make this complex beer, which is really uh, a bit strong. The ale is always considered as light, but this one is a bit complex and strong, I tell you. We'll ask from, I mean, people in the Europe that what uh, what you are going to prefer, I mean, beer. What uh, beer you will prefer? People will say light beer. They prefer light beer. And they will probably go with a stout water, maybe uh, with AB beer as well. That's what I have experienced here in India. And if you'll ask any uh, Indian here in India what type of beer you would like, so people will tell you, uh, give me some strong beer. Let's see, uh, beer has to be consumed. I mean, uh, if you are consuming beer, then the flavors, the light beers will give you the whole flavors. That's, that's my personal opinion, which I have experienced so far. Let's go to the Trappist beer back. So you'll find uh, those uh, monasteries people. They used to guard and they used to, uh, you know, guide the brew masters how to do it. So there are six Belgian Trappist monasteries. They used to uh, manufacture this. Next is IPA. That's our Indian Pale A, which is really hoppy, I tell you. It's, it's, uh, the color will be very much uh, golden, see here. And uh, uh, you will find bitterness, the taste, the flavors of all hoppy uh, things will be there inside IPA. Next is the laggers now. Let's see the laggers are the result of bottom fermentation. So it is made onto a low temperature. And it is stored, uh, you know, into uh, cold uh, storage systems. Uh, this beer is clear, crisp, and refreshing. Now, this word lager has been derived from lagerin, which means to store only. Okay? So it is stored around 3 to 10 degrees Celsius of temperature. There are many varieties of lager, I tell you. The Pilsner, which is very famous. Let's see what is there in Pilsner. Now this this beer comes from the country of the Czech Republic, Europe. Now it is subtly malty, crisp again, aromatic. This is also having with hoppy flavors inside. The next style is the Bock beer, which is again very dark. All these beers are very dark. But this is somewhat very much uh, uh, having malty, smoky flavor inside. Inside the Bock beer, you will find uh, it is. It is. It comes from the Bavaria region of Germany. You see here. Yes. Uh, let's see some beer brands of different countries. So, Corona comes from Mexico. Foster's from Australia. Carlsberg from Denmark. Tibor from Denmark, Dortmunder 
from Germany, Ronnie from Italy, Budweza from USA, Asahi and Kiri that's from Japan, Tiger from Singapore. So these are a few uh, world famous beers. And some key terms which we need to understand and we will be uh, uh, having, I mean, we already have discussed it. Now the difference between ale and lager. Let's see. The first difference is, of course, uh, yeast. The Saccharomyces cerevisia will be used for ale. The top fermentation is used. And uh, for lager, you require Saccharomyces cows virginesis. Bottom fermentation is required. Right? The temperature variation will be there in manufacturing process. Let's see. For the ale, you require 15 to 25 degrees Celsius of temperature. For lager, 5 to 9 degrees Celsius temperature. Ale is high in alcohol and lager low in alcohol. Uh, well, this alcoholic beverage, uh, this ABV thing is now getting deteriorated. In my recent research, while I was uh, working on beer, then I came to know uh, that there is one beer which is uh, having around 56% of alcohol by volume. That doesn't go by the definition that it should not be more than 6% of alcohol by volume, but that's now 50%. Uh, and the name of that brand is Snake Venom, I guess. So you can search onto the internet or onto the Google about Snake Venom. It's, uh, we cannot sell here in India because, of course, 42.8% is, is the permissible level here. Now let's go to the stories of beer, everyone. So if you are storing beer, that area has to be uh, well ventilated, very clean, of course. And uh, the temperature which has to be maintained into that area has to be 13 to 15 degrees Celsius of temperature. Once we have received properly, we need to uh, stack it properly into the horizontal uh, position, of course. Uh, do one thing, we need to check that whole area, whether it is a uh, area which is having the vibration, uh, that area has to be well ventilated and cleaned properly, of course. Let's see, all the cellars or the equipments used into the beer, uh, into that cellar has to be cleaned. That's all for the day. So... Now over to intro Neil, sir. So, sir, in case of any question, I'm ready to take that. I don't think, sir, because the PPT presentation was extremely easy and basics are very clear. So we, I, we do not have any questions right now. So thank you, Mr. Shashikant. It was an excellent session uh, describing all the basic aspects of beer. So thank you once again. We appreciate you being here from your busy schedule. Uh, we will meet again. We'll call you uh, and rest. Today you can enjoy and we will move forward to the next session. Thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Shashikan. Thank you all the attendees. Now we will move forward to the next session. That is the demonstration of beer cocktails. Uh, over to Mr. Uh, Imran, our expert trader. Over to Mr. Imran. We've got some beer cocktails now. Beer cocktails are not very famous in India these days, but if you go to uh, places like Goa or some European countries, you'll find many beer cocktails which are very popular there, these sites. Because there the humidity is high, the sea is there, so people need to drink long, uh, long drinks. That's why they take beer cocktails there. Not in northern part of India, but southern side. West, usually western and southern, uh, eastern parts, you can say, top of all. Uh, today, the first cocktail I'll be talking about is Brass Monkey. Okay, it says a very basic cocktail. Uh, it has beer, orange juice, and Agustra Vita. There are three main ingredients in it. So, I'll try to explain it to you further by uh, demonstrating how to make the prepare the drink for you. Okay, for that, we need a nice cocktail glass like this. Okay, this is a basic cocktail glass for a tall drink. Okay, in that first ingredient is 
A R ice cubes. They need two to three uh, cubes of ice, depend on the size of the ice. So I am taking three cubes here. In that, I'll put orange juice first. Uh, it is about 60 ml of orange juice in it. And after that, the second ingredient is Agustra bitter. It's a bitter which we we'll find alcoholic also, non alcoholic also. This is the non alcoholic one. Okay. Just a few drops. Around uh, 10 drops will do it. And then the main ingredient is the beer. So, I'll be putting some beer in it. Beer, we float the beer. It's a built-up cocktail, so usually it's it is a fizzy beer, so it will mix uh, itself here. Yeah. We don't need to stir it. And the garnish it goes with the lemon ring. Oh, sorry, orange ring which I have prepared earlier. So we can put it inside also or just outside also. And we require a straw and a stir. This is the drink. Thank you. So friends, in the next cocktail, beer cocktail I'll be showing you is called Red Eye. It's called Red Eye because there's a red ingredient in it. Tomato juice. That's why the color of the cocktails it's become red, so it's red eye. And a bit of egg white also goes in it, so it's a bit of frothy thing. So we call it red eye. So the main ingredients of the uh, cocktail are vodka, egg white, uh, beer, and tomato juice. Okay. So I'll try to make it for you. We'll take a beer goblet, and in this. We we'll have need to require a shaker. First thing we we'll do, we we'll take ice in the shaker. We require an egg white. So egg white goes in the shaker. We need to add tomato juice around 30 ml or you can say 30 35 ml of orange juice. Now we require vodka. Vodka we take 30 ml. We need to shake it. We need to shake it vigorously for around say 40 45 seconds. Unless until you can feel the thing that it has become frothy inside. You can feel it. If you have been bartending for so long, you'll be uh, you'll, uh, know by just touching at the uh, shaker and the temperature, how the temperature has changed inside. You can feel it. The sound also changes. Inside. We'll pour it completely with the ice also. and top it up with the beer. It's a very cool drink to have but it is a very long drink. So you need to consume it by sipping it for long. You can chill out and have it 
you are sitting beside the beach and having it, something like that. And we need to garnish it. I am garnishing it with lemon slice. See the, see why it is called red eye? It's white here because of the egg and it's red downstairs. Thank you. Next cocktail I will be talking about, it's called Porsche Crawler. Porsche Crawler is a, basically a Mexican cocktail. So uh, the main ingredients of Porsche Crawler is vodka, lemonade and beer. Okay, I will make it for you. Vodka, beer and lemonade. I need to have ice cubes. I'll have lemonade. Lemonade is required to top it up to make it a little bit soothing. Okay, because vodka is going in it. 30 ml of vodka. Beer we will be taking around 120 ml. And we will pop it up with lemonade. Uh, lemonade for lemonade, I am using Sprite. The garnish for this drink will be a lemon slice. Cocktail is ready. This is done. Cheers. Uh, the next cocktail which I'll be making with beer is called U boat. U boat has a history actually. The history dates dates back to World War II. The Germans have U, -U boats. This was small ships actually. German made. It was. Uh, equipped with bombs and they used to uh, go and directly hit the American ships and used to sink the American ships. So it was called U-boat. So I'll be making that thing in a cocktail. Okay. So we require chilled beer and vodka. There are two ingredients. We'll be uh, using 30, uh, sorry, 60 ml of vodka and we'll top it up with beer. So. This is 60 ml of vodka. If you want to have it strong, you can increase the vodka content also. Not an issue because you vote. So it's a bomb. So I need. I'll be preparing a bomb. So I'll be putting this glass like this, and it will hold like this only. And then we'll be floating the beer. This cocktail doesn't have any garnish, nothing at all. It will be served like this only. So you need to sip it and drink it. Don't drink and drive. Cheers. The next cocktail I'll be preparing will be is called Summer Shandy. So they are this 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 drink is usually uh, dr uh, drunk in the uh, Mexican region only. So it is a a bit milder form of drinking this beer so it has the four main ingredients it's called lime lime juice 
soda, simple syrup, and beer. Four main ingredients. That's it. Okay. First, we'll take ice cube in this glass. Two cubes of ice. Dash of lime juice. Uh, two dashes of simple syrup. That's sugar syrup. We'll put beer. One hundred and twenty ml of beer goes in it, and around thirty ml we'll be using club soda. Uh, this drink is a bit tangy because lime juice has gone in it, so it is a very uh, one of the favorite drinks for the ladies actually. Ladies like it like a bit tangy things that's why. We'll garnish it with lemon slice. Cheers. Uh, the next cocktail I'll be preparing is called Classic Shandy. This uh, drink is very popular in European countries and dates back to around 100 years old. You can say if you look at the history of this drink, it will be around 100 years old and it's very basic. We can make it at home anywhere. It's a very easy, simple drink which can be prepared at home also. So I'll be taking the glass. I'll take the pilsner with it. I'll put ice. Around three four cubes of ice. Beer. Around hundred fifty ml of beer. And we'll top it with ginger ale. This is a very mild drink, so it's very popular in European countries. Cheers. Uh, the next cocktail I'll be preparing it will be called, called Michelada. It's a spicy cocktail from Mexico. So it has got some basic uh, ingredients in it like beer, uh, tomato juice. We have an uh, uh, Worcestershire sauce, Tabasco, lime juice. Uh, we'll start it by rimming the glass with chili flakes and. Salt, uh, salt. We'll put the glass in the rimmer. We'll put some lime juice in it. Then we put this glass in the rimmer with salt in it. This is rimming. Okay. And for this, after this, we'll put some chili flakes also. It's actually a spicy drink, so we take salt and chili powder together. Usually, we take we make use of chili flakes. The uh, first ingredients which we put is ice cubes. Four cubes of ice. Lime juice, Worcestershire sauce, uh, 
it's a mix of you can say bloody berry also instead of vodka we are using beer apple gallop of tobacco tomato juice around 45 ml of tomato juice and we'll top up it with beer this is a bit spicy cocktail you can say the garnish will be a lemon wedge not a lemon ring cheers the next uh, cocktail i'll be preparing is called beer margarita or beer rita whatever you want to it is also a mexican cocktail because we put tequila in it it's a basic cocktail like uh, in margarita we add beer that's mari uh, beer rita okay for that first we'll take the shaker shaker three four cubes of ice ice lime juice tequila but table tequila 15 ml of corn through we'll shake it vigorously for this glass before pouring it we need to rim it with salt as we usually rim it for the classic margarita we'll transfer the string in the glass and top up with beer We'll garnish it with a lemon wedge. That's done. Cheers. Uh, the the next cocktail which I'll be preparing is called Queen Mary. Queen Ma Mary was a, a queen of England, and she did really like this drink. That's why it's called Queen Mary. It's got two basic ingredients: beer and grenadine. That's it. Nothing else. So we take a glass. We usually take chilled glass, but I'm taking a normal glass, cocktail glass. We we'll put beer. We we'll take light beer, and we we'll put grenadine syrup in it. this is called queen mary and we garnish it with a lemon slice orange slice sorry
Cheers. The next cocktail I'll be preparing is called Caesar cocktail or one two three four in forty liters language. The first ingredient we'll be putting will be putting ice cubes. Uh, a few drops of lemon juice, just a bit. Tabasco or hot sauce. Worcester shire sauce. Pepper. Four dash of pepper. Vodka. 30 ml vodka salt and we'll top it up with beer it is a tall drink and and very refreshing We'll put lemon wedge for garnish. Uh, the next cocktail I'll be preparing is called Broadler, and it is an American cocktail which is very popular in America these days. And it is very basic cocktail. It got it has got only three main ingredients: soda, lime juice, and beer. I'll prepare it. I'll take this pastry glass. I'll put ice cube in it. The first ingredient we go is ice cube. Five cubes of ice. Lime juice. A dash of lime juice. Beer. 120 ml of beer and we'll top up uh, top it up with club soda this is called rodler this is a built up drink and we'll garnish it with a lemon wheel with this cocktail i'll be ending the session of preparing beer cocktails hope this session will be a good learning experience for you all thank you very much thank you mr imran now we will move forward to our next expert trainer mr vinay mr vinay punia and we will a good taste we will add little bit of peach syrup which is a secret ingredient in it a little bit around like 15 ml or so we will add this side and after that let's have a perfect two of the beer bottle and we will pour some beer inside and after that we will mix it a little bit and we will keep that for 
around an hour or two. This is like a drink we serve in as a welcome drink or in a party like we have a tomorrow and we have decided to give a guest a nice fruity cocktail so we can make it ready in advance and we can serve in the drinks or in the party time. Let me allow it to extract the juices in the beer for an hour or two and we will show you the rest after some time. Thank you. Hello, now next cocktail we will prepare is like sunshine boiler maker. In this ingredients are beer which is top up with a whiskey that is being flambe. So first we will pour some beer in the glass. While pouring the beer we will make sure we have we don't have any froth for this cocktail or if it is there we can remove by using the spoon only the froth and later on we will take the whiskey which we will plumb it I hope now you can see the flames, the flames. Now we will float this. Hope you can see the flames. Still we have flames. It is now so. And we will garnish with an orange twist on the side. Cheers! So next cocktail we will prepare is like whiskey sour car bomb. For this we require an all purpose wine glass for whiskey sour we will prepare. But whiskey sour's recipe says whiskey, lemon juice, little bit of simple syrup and an egg white, half egg white but over here we will not put the egg white we will put around 30 ml of whiskey Ml of lemon, 15 ml of lemon juice ten ml to fifteen ml of simple syrup if we put the egg to mix egg well We will first give a dry shake. Dry shake is a shake that is without ice. If we put the egg, now we are not putting the egg, so we will put the ice and we give a nice shake. We will do it fine strain so that the ice does not come in the cocktail which can dilute this cocktail. At last we will pour some beer. For garnish we will use a lime wedge. We will remove the seeds and this white part. 
फॉर्म एट ओके नाइस जेल क्रिकेट चीयर्स so our next cocktail is snake bite snake bite the ingredients are cider and a lager beer so first we understand what is a cider cider is an apple flavored fermented drink which look same like a beer but when we drink it tastes like an apple so first we pour a cider half glass cider and then on the top we will pour the beer the color of cider and a beer are almost same for the next is the garnish so cider is an apple flavored so we use two of the apples then we put an orange we use a cherry and we use the orange swirl on the top it's look like a snake which is holding apple thank you and cheers so next cocktail we will prepare is bulls bulls is a summer cocktail which has ginger ale beer and a lemon juice So first we take a glass the garnish is lemon wheel we we'll cut the lemon make it a wheel first we pour the beer we are using a bottle beer if you want you can use a draft beer as well for the drink or for the cocktail to pour the ginger ale nice frothy this cocktail is very good if you like on the beach or in the summers garnish the night be thank you and cheers and after we'll put a little bit of lemon juice this is like around 10 ml then with the night be thank you now we have bring back our summer pizza cooler it's already extract the fruits flavored and juice in the beer now we will pour it if you want to add you can add some extra fruits inside and then we will top up this as a pizza contains wine and a club soda for this we will top up with a club soda slowly gently as already have lot of fruit so it does not require any garnish from outside cheers so our next cocktail is peach shandy as we all already know the shandy is a cocktail which is made with beer and sprite or ginger ale but this time we will give a peach touch to the shandy for this we will use peach syrup like around 15 to 20 ml 
in a sales car class and pour some beer Or at the end, we'll top up, top up with Sprite or lemonade. Garnish we use is orange, stir, and double straws. So in a bar like there, are so many. Cocktails and mocktails are prepared by the bartender. So usually when they prepare an alcoholic drink, they usually put double straw just to identify the drink is alcoholic or non-alcoholic. Cheers. Live as if we, are, we were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. With this, I would like to thank all the speakers, trainers, and our learners. With this, we are going to end this session. Uh, we have learned a lot of things regarding uh, beer manufacturing, beer uh, types of beer, and the best one was the uh, cocktails related to beer, beer-based cocktails. So for today's session, uh, we are about to finish, and we'll see you tomorrow with some new topics with, uh, related to uh, food and beverage service industries. So be safe. Join tomorrow, Jane.